you're gonna have something that you would be responsible if you want to come but you're not if you think that's a hazard then take it down that's that's not how it's gonna work though that is how it works okay what we got here Norway maple okay just for the record this is 100% over the property line it's not completely failed it's technically this guy's responsibility but these guys are taking care of it and he's claiming if we don't take down this other side that we're responsible for it but it's clearly 100% his tree he's responsible for it all it's grace that these guys are taking care of this part so I'm just putting this on the record just in case there's an issue so these two trees are separate entities this tree is not doing anything to support it hi we're gonna be taking this off today okay so you're not taking this we we aren't I mean this is 100% your tree sure so I just want to so. make you aware that the other the other three arborists or whatever you guys call yourself right. um, have said that they don't know what would happen to this if it'll die if it will have too much weight with the counter balance of this one this, this tree has nothing to do with this side they're they're already separate entities sure you know so so that this is here or this isn't here doesn't change the status of this one sure no i get what you're saying. you know what i'm saying but I, i'm just saying that before that you start i need to type something up that if something does happen to this side that you guys will be responsible for we're not responsible for it this is 100 percent your tree why aren't you taking care of this i took down another tree already this, i know that's not your problem so. i i know i know but but this is the issue that's the hazard we're we're being hired to take away the hazard from this property i'm just saying what we're doing here has nothing to do with your site okay. i'm not making it more hazardous by taking no, this I'm not off saying that you are. i'm just saying that i am gonna have something that you would be responsible if you want to come but you're not if you think that's a hazard then take it down that's that's not how it's gonna work though that is how I'm it works. If you want to come on my property to take it down, I I'm not coming on your property to take it down. We're going to be over here. Sure, but my property does go over there. Well, how's the lot line go? Um, it's almost up to the garage. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just saying that that's the other guy that was here agreed the same thing. He couldn't show up until Saturday. So I. That's why. You I couldn't. know, but this this isn't their responsibility to take sure. this down it is the same thing the tree that was here it wasn't it wasn't all my responsibility to take that down when it was almost touching their house you that's you it. can well you so, know that's whatever this is going to stand here probably for a long time you know whatever if you think you got a case to come after me if this falls sometime in the future i'll tell you what your insurance company if you know this is a hat or you think this is a hazard and you leave it it's you, on you do something i be i have nothing to do with that part it, it's it, even though it's two it's one together it's no it's it's separate it, it's separate that tree is that part is not helping or hurting that part right well that's uh, i get what you're saying you know i I'm mean i'm just saying that i'm not going to i'll tell you what okay I, i'm a board certified master arborist i've been in court as an expert witness what you're saying there's you got nothing so you got nothing based on what the other guy said too if if you cut it wrong anywhere even just trimming it it could kill the whole tree no that these are these are two separate sprouts you know it was probably an old stump that got cut off and then they were just left to grow so there are three of them growing sure. ultimately at the beginning I, well, no, I'm just telling them that I'm going to hold them responsible if something happens. You're, you, have to you have nothing to hold. He's trying to tell me that I should pay to cut it down or whatever the case may be. But that's just how, it, that, I, that's, that's how it's going to be. You, well, you're speaking off a hypothetical, but this, well, our, our, what we're being hired to do is. Not tell you that. Well, yeah, all of them did. 
Yeah. He's well, the only one not. You're, you're, uh, you know, I'm being hired to take down this side, so the whole tree is your responsibility. Okay, I've got to interject here. <laughs> Why am I kind of aggressive in this video? Well, there's some history. Uh, one, I have history with the client. Uh, this was a, a woman who tragically lost her son uh, to a drug overdose. And, you know, several years ago. And in her grief and in her desire to, to leave a legacy for her son's life, she purchased what was an old crack house. Imagine having that for a neighbor. And she created it into a, a sober living home, a faith-based sober living home. And she's doing a wonderful work in a lot of men's lives, and giving them second chances. She runs a tight ship. They all have jobs. It's, it's a legitimate nonprofit organization that's doing great work. And, and you can find it below this video and if, if you want to give. I've contributed in the past. I've, I've kind of taught some finance things with the guys and, and I've pledged to give some more this year. So it, it's a noble cause. It's doing some great things. And secondly, there's a little history with this property line. I wasn't involved, but there was apparently another tree that grew over the line, and it was a nuisance tree to, to the, the nonprofit, and this guy had to remove it because it was his tree. And apparently he's got a little chip on that shoulder, but that's the nature of owning trees that grow over property lines. Uh, sometimes you're responsible for their behavior. And now, the property line goes to the sky? Well, yes and no. Uh, put that to the test one time by cutting a bunch of branches off of somebody's tree. <clears throat> if what you do kills your neighbor's tree, you could very well be liable for that tree. And so you have to be very careful. Uh, if uh, Even if you dig in the ground and, and damage roots that end up killing your neighbor's tree, you're going to be liable for that tree. And how expensive is that? Well, <clears throat> the most expensive tree is the one you weren't supposed to kill. That's for sure. Uh, and it's probably going to be worth more after you kill it than when it was before you killed it. Uh, that's just how it works. And now, in this case, we are not arbitrarily pruning this tree. Th this is an act of God that came along, a storm, fractured this tree, and it did everything but drop it on the garage. It's still standing, but it's an imminent hazard. And so, technically, it's this guy's responsibility. It's still standing. If a tree falls, you know, and falls on your property from another property, it becomes your tree. You know, it's not their insurance company that's gonna cover your garage if it falls on your garage. It, that, you know, once it separates and falls to the ground, it's your tree. But once, if it's standing, it's kind of the neighbor's tree. It originates there. It's his hazard to, to protect you from that damage. But in this case, he, he kind of doesn't want to take responsibility. And, and the, the cops kind of favor, oh, no, it goes to the line. And, you know, the property line goes to the sky. That, that's, that's their tree. So without the court of law, you know, the, the police officer is at the court of law. So he, he thinks he's got an argument that now we're arbitrarily pruning a tree. If it damages the other side, you know, he's going to get his removed. You know, it's going to be my responsibility somehow. And that was because some arborist said, oh, no, they should both come down. No, these are separate stems. Uh, you know, if you look at the base, I'm pretty positive that I'm right on this that it was probably an old stump and several shoots grew out and three of them and one's been cut off already and these two stems remain and a lot of times when this occurs they graft together and they become kind of one but in this case there is no graft there's an absolute visual separation physiologically there's nothing I do to this tree over here is going to do anything to the tree that's remaining and so, you know, they're just, it's apples and oranges. And, and so, you know, I'm not an attorney, but according to a reasonable degree of probability within my field of expertise, I'm not going to be responsible for that tree. So with all that context, 
I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks for watching. Possibility. No, it's yeah. not. Only the property line goes up. Property line all the way up in the air. No. Uh, again, the was already here. I, yeah. the they, police chief was already here. It, that doesn't there. hold up in court. You know, sure so. Because that's what we've been told. You're, well, I've been in the court. So, so where do you want? You want me to cut this off right here then? I mean, we'll take, we're going to take it down to here just because that's what should be done. But, you know, the property line, you can't, if, 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 if we were going to prune a tree on a property line, we can't, we can't prune it to damage the tree just right. because that property that's line doesn't go all the way up. Not it's not because they're separate entities. Okay, well then just keep they're separate the entities. So it, so we're gonna take this side off. You know, if you want to hold me responsible, go ahead, bring the case. Well, <laughs> just don't go on my property at all. Then we'll, well, we're gonna take it right to here. Well, well, we're going to remove the hazard. So our friendly neighbor told us that this neighbor called him and said that she can see on camera that our outriggers are on her property, which indeed they likely are. But, you know, we're in process here, so we're probably not going to change, but I'll tell you, if she calls in and actually complains, because we don't know that she actually called, we just know that that guy said she called. So if somebody actually asked me to move my lift, I could. I could set up in the driveway here, but the power line is a little more obstructive in the driveway. I've got a, I'm working against it here too. I'm underneath it, but at any rate, I tell you, drama. It's like life is too short to to have this kind of conflict, I mean, whatever. So yeah, sometimes in a game of trees, there's, you know, tempers and property lines and different things. And we got to work around them and we got to do what well, we do. Anger neighbor's still angry, but we got a solution. Stay tuned for the end of the video where we make an offer. It shouldn't be refused. Game of trees, we're making it right. The, the tree is two separate stems. They originate out of the ground with, uh, you know, decay on the buttress root here on this one, a little bit on that one. And the whole issue was, you know, oh, this is one tree. 
Yes, it's one tree genetically, but it's two independent stems. You know, they're supporting each other independently. So here's an example of two stems that, that grew up very close to each other, uh, closer than uh, the ones in the example that we're talking about. But a similar situation where ultimately if they get close enough, they'll try to graft together. But you can see this existing crack uh, that goes all the way up and there's included bark in between. So these two stems would, in their natural environment, be mostly supporting themselves independently. There's not a really a graft between them. Now in this case, they've been cabled together. I don't know if you can see up there. There's two cables uh, that are connecting these two stems and they've been that way for 20 years. So if for some reason this side was destroyed and was going to be removed right to here, because there's those cables up there, this could definitely fall over the next day because for 20 years, it hasn't been supporting itself. They've been working completely together. But in the case at hand, you know, this maple stem is separate. They've been standing independently of one another for a long time. And it's not like this situation where I'd have to worry about it falling over the next day. You know, they're supporting each other independently. So this has a buttress root right here. Right here is a buttress root on this stem. So this buttress root comes out and is supporting it. Maybe. <laughs> and so it's still standing. And we got, uh, you know, this, this side is not growing, so it died. But the root plate, the whole idea that the root plate's gonna come out of the ground uh, is completely unfounded. You know, what holds the ground, the roots in the ground is the ground, not the weight of the other tree. It's, uh, it's simply, uh, no. How are you doing today? No? That's how you get your rocks off? <laughs> I'm just answering questions. Yeah, I would just move on. Well, I'm on public property I'm right here. So we're, uh, got the, uh, You can see around the base of this tree, there's no, there's no swelling or any movement of soil whatsoever. Uh, it's firmly in place. You know, the idea that you're going to take this weight off and all of a sudden the other side's just going to, you know, fall off uh, is unfounded. Uh, it's simply uh, held in ground by the ground itself. So if we got saturated soils and a wind out of the east, uh, you know, this is east this way, this is west. So our prevailing winds from the south and the west are basically holding this tree up. This is a co-dominant stem right up here, you know, above the ground where they share the same xylem. So if this branch is taken off, decay would go down into this stem. You know, these are, are not joined at the ground. The decay that's occurring here is not directly affecting this. This living active stem that's still alive is gonna keep roots alive out into this area because, you know, the root base is connected. And so this living stem is more likely to keep roots alive out here than this dead stem is going to affect this other side. So at any rate, just some things to consider 
you know, when taking it down. Obviously, you know, we took it down right to the line. Uh, it's actually still over the line a little bit. Uh, he, he thought the line went beyond the garage. We've got three property lines here. So between these houses, I'm standing about at the corner of the property. Um, so when our lift was set up right here at the side of the garage, we had one little outrigger out here that was probably over this line. But this line comes right up here to the sidewalk and then goes straight over here behind the garage here. So uh, that would, is the situation. Yeah, he's doing some reflecting uh, on our most recent interaction. Man, bitterness is like a pill you eat expecting someone else to die. You know, it's poison. And I don't hold a grudge well, and I don't want people holding grudges against me. So, you know, I've got values in my company. One is extreme ownership. You know, I can own this thing. I, I possess the ability to bring closure to this. And after this interaction, I, I think it's worthy of closure. And so I have offered in writing uh, to take down that tree, remove the stump, backfill, plant grass, and plant another tree, you know, somewhere in the yard, the right tree in the right place that will bring value to the home and bring closure to this. And, and that's within my ability to do. And I've offered that. And so hopefully, you know, we can shake hands on this thing and, and put it in the past. Uh, because, you know, there's value in the discussion. There's value in these, these scenarios come up all the time in tree care, you know, trees, trees on borders. And so it's, it's got value, but it's time, it's time to let it go. So, uh, with that, it's Game of Trees. Uh, we like to have fun, but we like to do things that, that mean something as well. So uh, there's my offer. It's standing. Okay. Well, good. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. You bet. And uh, thank you for, you know, letting me do it. <laughs> okay. So we're on cordial terms. There's our stump. They got word pressing against each other, but they're separate stems. And so it's gonna be fun to excavate this stump and just see what's under there uh, and see how far that separation goes. But here's our tree. We got service wire there, but that shouldn't be hard to avoid. The lift is in town, but it's at a different job. So I'm gonna climb this. I'm gonna treat it like it's uh like it's a hazard uh, I'm gonna create some compression forces here I'm gonna set a, a retrievable block up there and uh, and use this spar as, as kind of a, a rope angle change so that we can uh, kind of mitigate the lean a little bit and we'll rig this stuff back to this spar uh, so this should be a fun fun time got my new boots on today and they caused a crazy error look at that see that see that I can't have anything nice I'm sitting in the car I'm moving this forward I'm gonna inch this forward to get out of the way of a truck and I got one foot out the door and I go to switch to the brake and these new boots you know they're they're stiff so my my ankle didn't move as much and I go over and I run into the brake and I push down on the accelerator and I surge forward a few feet into a pile of lumber and this like squeezed against my leg my leg was outside the door do not pull forward with your leg outside the door it just you know it's not worth it so pretty crazy can't have anything nice No, that that'll be fine because we'll we'll be rigging right here. Okay. So, 
It'll be good, thanks. will be light enough for this. I'll get right up here. Up close and personal. I could actually do this. Get nice and comfortable. You know, work position is everything. gonna do this. I'm gonna tie a clove here. Okay, so I tied a clove hitch. And here we'll tighten that up. Should have cut the notch first, but we can do that. Hold it high. for you. Bad boys, bad boys. Hold hold this high so it comes over or hits the line. Okay, there's a second one coming here. Coming over. Okay. Uh, two cuts. First one doesn't fall, second one they both fall. the shoulder shooting blind oh.
So here's the moment of truth. Two independent stems not supporting each other. They're independently supported. Okay? They are not holding each other. We're gonna go get the uh, little loader. Okay, so the, the little bit of roots, there is actually like roots growing in between the stumps. All right, so that was the only thing, was this fibrous material between the stumps. And that was just adventitious roots growing up into that, you know, decaying portion, this decaying portion here. And that airspace in between the stumps. But there's no, there's no connection between the two stems all the way to the ground. <laughs> all the way to the ground. They are supporting each other independently from the ground. And that, that was my argument. They're, they're virtually separate entities. Any, any cutting on this side, the decay is gonna go down into this side. It's not gonna affect this side directly. And the weight of this on the root plate, it's immaterial. That root plate is held in the ground very, very well. So I was never worried about a root plate failure. There's actually, there's zero, we've had some wet, some wet weather and there's zero swelling. I mean, that, that root plate never moved since we've been here two years ago, year and a half safely. So anyhow, now let's get this second one cut off of there. Okay, where's our little blower? Did they they didn't take our blower? A little hair dryer. After having these 900 CFM floors, these are like hair dryers. That's interesting. So that third stump, you know, died, and these are probably two shoots off of that that then enveloped, enveloped that. There could have been an old stump underneath here, a small one. But these are absolutely <laughs> independent stems. They're self-supporting. So this buttress whip comes out here and supports this. And we're probably gonna find that they're quite separate down under the ground too. Yeah, start close and work your way out. Okay, so we have a lot of fine roots here. Here's a big buttress root on, on this living stem that was here. 
So this is supporting a lot, and this actually goes all the way around as a girdling root to the other stem. And that's partially why this was, was dying back here, is this stem was girdling it. And, and this necrosis here is, is from this girdling stem. But this root is supporting, you know, that whole tree and came over here. So the idea that that, that tree had no back support it was not true. Now here we've got this mass of roots is coming out of, of this side. But there, obviously, these roots are still alive. I just hit this with a shovel and it was like green. So this is all grafted to this, which is no doubt potentially grafted to roots from that one. Uh, although there's, there's dead bark here, it's probably from this girdle. So this tree was kind of growing this way and that tree was kind of growing this way. But this one's been dead for 18 months, but these roots are still alive. So they are grafted to roots that are connected to this one. So as I stated several times in many comments, the living stem was keeping a lot of the roots alive from the dead stem. And, you know, they were each sending roots out as a reaction to their gravitational pull. So this tree wanted to go that way. It's sending a big root this way uh, to support itself. So the idea that we take this weight away and this tree's just gonna come out of the ground because of that weight. Well, all through the years, it was growing support against that phenomenon. And, and so it's amazing what, what trees do. They respond to you know, their environment around them. And if we'd have left this tree, it would, for every, every day this tree was alive, it was putting on reaction wood in the area which it needed it. And so this tree may have existed for a long time, even though you know, there's some decay on the inside here and these roots are from this tree. So it was sending down roots and these would get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger uh, as, as a way of supporting it. They were coming down from the tree and into this rotting stuff and they probably go down underneath the soil. And we may see that as we grind this. You can shut that down. So pretty, pretty interesting. <clears throat> Now we're gonna grind it and we're gonna see exactly, you know, we're gonna see a separation all the way down in here because this girdling root was cutting off any potential that they would, they would graft right there. Um, but that's pretty, pretty cool. So on a smaller tree, we, we use the air spade to blow it out like this and then we can prune like we see a root like this that maybe is girdling and we the root this size we can prune out and cut it right out of there but you can see when when roots cross each other they graft together so here's here's it's all grafted it just grafts together but if it gets against the stem it'll kill the stem gotta do it myself today so Eli is going to discover a lot of that today. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Did you get a piercing on your lip there, Eli? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never have I ever gotten a piercing. Never, <laughs> Never tempted? Nope. Maybe a tattoo. We'll see. So that's pretty pretty interesting. Kind of kind of neat how this this one went on this side, and this one went on that side. So they're like a spiral. But what I find most interesting is these are still alive. Even though this, this tree was, was dead, it didn't have any sprouts on it or anything for 18 months. But 
this this mass of roots must be grafted with this tree in some way. Okay. And yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got this whole buttress root that go goes across here. And these two are separate all the way down in to the ground. And this root actually goes in between them, finding every little crack and crevice that it can get to. But these two are separate all the way down as far as it can. And, and this buttress root from this tree goes underneath this girdling root. And maybe they're grafted, but they're not grafted here. And, and there is separation between this. So this was a living buttress root going down into the ground and you know maybe curves this way underneath. So this tree was you know heavily supported here as as was this one this this root probably goes in the ground and goes that way so things are not always as they appear going to look at this we got to set up one of these sleds too uh, I want to deflect some of this get it Man, I don't have a long sleeve shirt on. Why not? I have some sunscreen in my lunch bucket if you want some. Yeah. Thanks.
Okay, let's get this out of here. All right, so we have complete separation all the way down as deep as we go. And I've got to assume it that root stays separate. Like they just aren't grafting. And right in here, you can see the orientation of these, these roots. They're, they're curving this way because this root's gonna go down in the ground and curve that way because the weight was, was pulling it that way. This buttress root curves this way. This, this big root here is actually from this side. So this was a huge root that came down and was holding this tree up. And, and another buttress root from that tree that came down underneath this one went even deeper. That was a deep diver. And so these were completely separate, all the way down in the ground, still not grafted. We've got a distinct line of separation here and right there. So, and these fine roots are probably coming off both sides, probably mostly from this one because they were alive. Uh, just a few weeks ago and this this was kind of acting like it was dead uh, so that's all adventitious roots in that decaying material in the middle uh, so these were separate entities like I was saying separate entities and they're they're supporting each other independently orientating their roots in the direction that they needed to stay upright Trees have three growth regulators. Gravity, uh, light, and uh, water. You know, um, hydrotropic, phototropic, and geotropic. And they move in those directions according to those stimulus, stimuli. Uh, so, you can kind of picture what the tree is gonna do underground, knowing about those three growth regulators. And you just say, okay, where's the water? Where's the light? Where's the gravity? Okay, where's the weight of the tree? That's how the gravity plays. So if the weight of the tree is being pulled by gravity in a certain direction, then the tree is gonna respond away from that direction. To provide support it's pretty incredible uh, a great design I wonder who designed that that's another that's another video all right time to look at the other side pretty cool pretty cool look at look at how that is like curving it's like I gotta go that way right well anchor in itself this one before it even was storm damaged was probably so it's coming around anchoring itself exactly so that probably goes under that right. root and who knows it's like over there somewhere mm -hmm. all right well stand back i'm gonna go see if the oil change place will let me use their restroom all right good idea I'd get that little devil out of there. Okay, so let's see where where are all these adventitious roots coming from? I can't I can't even tell who's feeding those. But these are alive. <laughs> so I gotta think that they're somehow connected to this tree. Uh, Cause they're, they're wet and alive. Even this, 
and it's separated from this tree but it, it's 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 kind of grafted there there's definite line there though um, and then these were these were coming down and into this decayed material so this buttress root is is going down here and probably goes deep in angles that way against this weight so here's the initial grind on the opposite side so we have that third stem that was in the middle it's all decayed and that's full of adventitious roots from both sides and then this big gnarly grafted mess that was here it's hard to distinguish which side it was coming from it looked like it came from that side and i i probably eliminated some of the i should have looked earlier uh probably gave me a telltale sign of where it came from i think it came from that side but they're alive and so uh they're probably grafted in some way to this living side that, that kept it kept these roots fed uh for 18 months 20 months now um, but pretty cool take a look at that structure uh, are these one tree or two trees uh, it's looking kind of like two to me oh it's nice to have somebody rake up while i'm <laughs> I could just stand here and do nothing. I yeah. <laughs> I I like this stump grinder. It doesn't throw stuff so badly. Not quite as bad. That white one, man, oh, you yeah. can't stand close to that thing. So again, you know, a big buttress root, and I would anticipate that that angles that way. And same with this one, that it goes down and angles this way. But they're definitely separate trees. There was nothing physically connecting them, you know, 12 to 18 inches below the soil. Um, so all the theories of mice and men and uh, you don't know what you don't know. So we've got one big buttress root here that probably angles. I, mean, I can't see that it's actually going that way, but it, it comes out here and definitely supports against that weight. Uh, this one is is going angling back this way which was against the other weight and they are definitely separate all the way down into the ground that was the original probably the original stump and these two were sprouts off of that original stump and now it's nothing but roots and decayed material but there was some grafting up on top and that grafting might, might have kept those roots alive. But pretty interesting stuff when you stop and take a look. I'm going to come right in there. And we'll go across that way. We're pretty much done filming now. <laughs> we got the interesting stuff.
All right. So the reason I stopped here is I wanted to see if I could see any difference between compression grain and tension grain. This would have been on the underside of the gravity. It's, it's pushing down. So these roots are holding the tree up. They're pushing against the tree to hold it up. And so, I mean, I can't see, is this tighter grain? I don't know. That looks like pretty, pretty open grain. You know, this on the back side, this tension wood, these are pretty wide wide grain this is tension wood over here too against this one so these are pretty wide growth rings uh, it's putting on a mass of wood to support against that this is compression and uh, you know it's probably not polished enough to be able to see that difference it doesn't readily look like it's that different in in grain but if we were to study it closely on a microscope, it might, we might see those distinctions um, between the compression wood and the tension wood. Anyways, at least I've mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see it here. I got a little deeper. This this wood is all crinkled up this is this is compression wood it's all crinkled up with the weight of that tree but just how it's growing is growing in a way to to, to hold that weight and uh, so it's it gets compressed it grows in a different matter but it helps push the tree up so it's not just the roots holding the tree on the back side as tension but there's compression wood and it grows in a manner to to push the tree up if you've ever seen a tree that kind of fell over and then it started growing up again it's putting on wood on the bottom side to push that 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 terminal lead up it's amazing what happens in the tree as it's growing but you can definitely see the difference in grain there if we go over here um, this is really straight long grains And this is all scrunched up and and they're probably tighter tighter growth rings as well so pretty cool game of trees we're having fun aren't we Mike <laughs> we're having fun I feel like I'm cheating on some trees <laughs> cheating on some trees <laughs> every time I go on stuff it's like isn't there a tree that has to be cut down? <laughs> yeah. So kind of interesting the interface between those two there were so many roots growing out of this tree you can't really see a definite line uh, but there's all these roots growing out into that decayed material but that decaying stump doesn't just move into the healthy wood uh, the healthy wood has barriers um, now there may be like a compression injury right there where it was I see a little finger that's going into the right here uh, so that that may actually be like a buttress root to that original stump is what I think that is and so this is the new wood that's not decay going into this wood that's the old buttress root uh, so a lot of comments they said oh well that that dead tree is gonna invade the the healthy tree no it doesn't work that way the healthy tree is living and active and responding to forces around it the dead tree is just being consumed and so dead trees don't automatically infect the healthy tree the healthy tree has defenses against that 
and it builds barriers. So here they existed for a long time and the good tree is growing into the dead tree, not the other way around. Uh, the, the living tree is consuming the dead tree. So. I got it. I got to educate. Yeah, I, got, I got at least till five o'clock tonight. Yeah, okay, good. So I just had to stop again. This is actually fun for me. I'm gonna do a vertical on this. So I'm here at the Anger Neighbor Stump and I had a lot of people say that dead tree is gonna infect the live tree. It's gonna invade it. All right, this center portion, this decayed portion is the third stem that was cut off originally. It, it was probably the original stump. Okay, who's invading who? Uh, there's no there's no decay going into the other stumps, but these live trees were invading that dead stump and consuming it with his, with roots. And so dead dead stumps don't just invade the living stumps. They uh, they're food for the living stumps. And so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, things are not always as they seem. Intu intuition, you know, it doesn't always work the way you think it does. But one thing for sure, a living tree responds. living is going up over the old yeah so this is pretty cool we've got the old stump that went out those are like the butcher struts of the old stump and that that new sprout kind of grew up and over them and so that that's kind of cool and that was the old stump so there was my original theory how did I know that people how did I know there was probably a stump in there and these were two shoots off of it? Because I've seen this before. It's called experience. And, uh, you know, when you see this, then when you see something else in nature, you're able to identify it and you're able to see what is unseen because you've seen it uncovered. So take a good look at that old stump that was in there and the new tree grew up and over it but you can see this this one i cut down 18 months ago is starting to break down uh this wood did not does not look as vibrant as the the stump i just ground so this was breaking down and in fact if my living stem would have stayed up it would have moved into there and consumed it the old stump would not move in and decay the new stump, the, the, the living stump would move in and consume the old stump. That's how nature works. Cool. Just plain cool. Nature. I tell you, what a design. some cool things and I encourage all you arborists out there to stop and touch trees as Dr. Shiga would say and look at what you are working with and you're just liable to learn something 
And there's a reason why I knew what was in this stump before I looked, because I'd stopped and looked before. And that's called experience, but you don't get that experience if you never look. So 30 years of the same experience is one year repeated 30 times. But if you stop and look and touch, you're gonna become somebody different because you're gonna know what you didn't know before. Gamey Trees, we're having fun. Like and subscribe, we'll see you next time. Playing the game of trees. Well, we'll see ya. Yeah, thank you for letting me do it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a good, good thing to have in the past. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Yep.